Well, here we go again. Interesting ideas. By the way, that's one of my favorite sounders, which I use a good deal of the time. I have a number of them, and I'm still waiting for some of you to make up your own and suggest them and perhaps send them to me, and I will use your sounder as part of our portfolio of please pay attention sounders. Actually, that comes from the uh, old sounder used by the British Broadcasting Company, the BBC, and I had a uh, In my kind of past life, uh, a number of contacts with the BBC, worked with them in a study uh, student capacity for one summer, and so uh, I fell in love with much of what is affectionately known at that time, the babe. And so that was uh, at least the sounder of my time. It has since, like most things of my time, (laughs) it has now been replaced by something else, but that's why I use that one. I was also reminiscing a bit uh, about uh, a presentation I want to give about somebody who is really loyal to their boss and someone who uh, has the ability to uh, practice incredible second string loyalty. That's a good idea, interesting idea. Second string loyalty, somebody who uh, is uh, obviously the assistant or a partner too, but uh, they're very definitely second string. And yet uh, they are exceptional and they are incredible and they are loyal and uh, they delight in helping somebody else look perhaps even better than them. And what came to mind was Tonto. Tonto, the Lone Ranger and Tonto. And that caused me to go back because now I'm showing my age and stage uh, the gentleman, and he truly was a gentleman, who portrayed Tonto in the movies and in the uh, television program in the uh, in the 50s, J. Silverheels, that was the name. And uh, I believe that was his real name, but it may have been a corruption of something else to give him his uh, acting name, which means is I'm going to do a little research on that and perhaps we'll actually do a program on the Tonto effect. That would be an interesting idea. Would you like to talk about the Tonto effect? Well, today, Friday is future day. We look toward the future. This is challenging. Uh, this is a challenging time, and we are in deep difficulty. And so we have to think about the future uh, rationally, reasonably, but with good faith and intention. And hopefully we want to do more of that. But today, I'm going to talk about how to increase your attractiveness, how to increase your attractiveness. That's going to be the program. Just a few thoughts on that for this Friday flowing into the weekend. Again, my name is Stan. I'm the spokesman. I'm the founder and the leader of What It Takes Radio, and this is our flagship program. It's called Interesting Ideas, and it begins right now. I'm hoping that you will discover that what I seek to do from time to time is that we have a program, and it is a program that stands on its own, and that's vital. But it is also related to or connected to another program that stands on its own. And you can put the programs together, and each one is unique and distinct and stands on its own, but if you kind of put them all together together, they actually increase their power. They are individual, but when they get together, they increase the power of each program and of each person and of the entire, want to call it team or posse or gang, Uh, all of those terms will fit. So hopefully that's an interesting idea, and this week we took off on a book a number of years ago, simply called The Prayer of Jabez. The Prayer of Jabez. And I'll just simply uh, let it go at that. I'm not even going to give the author's name. I'm just going to say he wrote a nice book. And if you're interested, 
do the Google, do the search, do the Bing, and find out more about that book. And if you're uh, curious as to what the prayer of Jabez was all about, its origins, its advocacy, and the ideas behind it, please do so. Many people loved it and found it helpful. Others disliked it and did not find it particularly useful. But like I said, <laughs> my friend who said, Stan, you don't want people to like your book. You, uh, you want them to hate it or love it. And I think that book kind of fell a little bit in that category, but check it out. But the term that the most was talked about was the word increase your territory. Increase your territory. And, of course, uh, that can have a couple different meanings, and it might not be particularly good. Uh, there are people who are trying to increase their territory at the cost of other people. And there are people who take the term increase your territory, which means simply to increase your influence for good. You know, build the size of your business, make it bigger and larger and more useful and more effective and more helpful. That could be increase your territory. And then if you want uh, to go back, and we've talked about a number of things uh, that you could increase. Uh, you could increase your hospitality factor. And uh, just the other day, we talked about increasing your wisdom factor. And that's why you need a CWO, a chief wisdom officer. And you uh, might Think about getting a CHO, a Chief Hospitality Officer. And then you just might think about uh, that you are with me. You're going through a lot of problems and pressure right now. And uh, as someone would say, well, Stan, who isn't? Well, some people are uh, so graced or fortunate it sometimes that that's not what they go through. But Almost everybody's carrying some deep burden. I know that. So uh, the point could be that uh, perhaps it is the uh, pressure and the problems that will actually give us the power that we need to live well. So that's been the deal. <laughs> and that hopefully in these six minutes will also be a helpful reminder to you. But... Uh, Today I want to talk about something I probably don't know very much about, but uh, I'm trying to learn. How to increase your attractiveness. That's right. Uh, very obviously. Here we go. We want to uh, increase our territory, perhaps. We want to increase our influence. We want to expand uh, our area of service. And we want to expand our attractiveness to others. How to be more attractive. Okay, let's back up. No, I'm not saying how to be physically attractive in your persona, at least to the point that you can't control it. You know, I tell you that uh, even though I do videos, I really like uh, the radio, and there are a variety of reasons for it. And of course, I use the old line. I've got a face made for radio. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you've seen me, uh, you'll see that I have aged, and I'm at that stage, and I don't wear any hair. Most of it I probably lost, but then I got rid of the rest because that was a little bit of part of my shtick at the time, my bald and shiny head, uh, which you, of course, can't see, but you can imagine it. And it also gave me, uh, as I said, a unique and distinct appearance, my uh, kind of spectacle glasses, and uh, that was a, a little bit of my brand, the uh, dark, kind of little bit uh, friendly, but sometimes almost a kind of a sinister appearance, or at least a mystery appearance. And then um, the shadows and the uh, shaved head and the glasses and uh, the right-in-your-face stare, that became part of my uh, signature. Now, what I'm talking about, here we go. Think about that. You want to attract people. Oftentimes we talk in sales and marketing and business about prospecting, about going out and finding people. And of course, 
one of the principles I taught in that you make the difference is it would be much better if we could actually attract people, that they would come and look for us, that because of what we do, they seek us. Um, I worked with a car dealer, (laughs) salesman, who never went on the floor to his boss's chagrin. And uh, he uh, very seldom had to worry about people to sell cars to. Chuck was just one of the most attractive men I know. Uh, He had suffered through some years of uh, alcoholism, had beat it, and uh, as he said, I'm no longer addicted to booze, but I sure like to work out and uh, try and keep my body in shape. And so he worked hard at being physically conditioned, physically in shape. He always made a point that uh, he would dress well no matter where he was, whether he was on the sales floor or in his office. He always made a point of doing that. He was an incredible listener. He, on some occasions, would actually have a potential buyer and he'd say, you know what, I don't really think I have anything for you right now. But I did see a vehicle over at. (laughs) Why don't you go check that out? And uh, maybe I can help you buy it and get a good deal on it. Yes, he did that. As a result, Chuck had a large group of people who liked him, recommended him, thought the world of him. Uh, Not only did... He sell cars to the people he sold to their children and to their grandchildren. My friend Chuck was an incredibly attractive man, and he was a used car salesman. Do you get the story? I don't know what it might mean when it says, okay, expand or increase your attractiveness. Could it be your smile? Could it be your kindness? Could it be the power of your personal presence? What could it be? Now, I'll be very honest. I'm old school. Um, I uh, sympathize and empathize, and I loved it when one of my top clients, uh, when uh, the idea of casual Friday was beginning to grow, and of course, uh, a number of people adopted that, And when his young and uh, vibrant staff came in and said, hey, we'd like to have casual Friday. Well, part of it was is that in that office, he insisted, he said, we are dealing with our clients. They are our guests. We're going to treat them as the most important people in the world. And we would dress the way we would dress if we met the president of the United States. That's how we would dress for them. And when they asked about casual Friday, he said with a smile, when everybody starts wearing casual, we're going to wear tux. (laughs) They got the point that in effect, unique, different, you know, better, attractive. So I just am going to let that sit on your head for a while. Certainly, We're blessed with the bodies and the looks and the frame we have. But isn't it interesting that if we seek to be attractive, maybe not just also physically, but how we present ourselves, how we attend to one another. Um, One of the compliments I once got when I was recommended is uh, someone uh, said that uh, Stan will listen to you like you've never been listened to before. I. And then they said, you will find that very attractive. That's the deal. Can I challenge you? And I would love to hear your recommendations. I would love to see how you would uh, perhaps work with your colleagues, with your teammates, and say, okay, here we are. Can we do something about making ourselves more attractive to the people we want to do business with? 
certainly the customer experience and uh, all of that is part of that. But uh, what can it be that everything about us, what we do, how we handle ourselves, how we treat others, um, how we think and act and show up in the marketplace that people would find it for sure attractive. Just let that uh, sit on your, in my case, bald head for a while. Let it perhaps uh, stir your mind and uh, maybe even touch your heart and maybe the future will be better for you because in these challenging times where everybody's kind of sour and mad and everything else, you will be more attractive. Just uh, an idea for your thought and consideration. I'm Stan Hughes to the program is Interesting Ideas. Thank you for your time. We'll close it up. I'll be right back. Again, one of my favorite themes, a little excerpt from Last of the Mohicans, an incredibly attractive film. And my little segue music is meant to kind of a, a signature me and add to the attraction of the program. StanHouston at gmail.com is how you reach out to me. We have a variety of programs and things we can do. First of all, I can make you more attractive by helping you be on the radio. That's the deal. A good radio program will attract people. <laughs> and that means those people will be attracted not only to your program, they will be attracted to you and your business. What you are hearing right now, what you are experiencing right now, is one of the key ways that in today's world you can be more attractive. And then think of the things you can do that make you, both in terms of your life, in your community, uh, at your place of worship, in your school, that can make you more attractive, and particularly in your place of business, where people walk in kind of with a smile because it's an attractive place with attractive people to be. And, of course, the person who meets him is a chief hospitality officer who greets them uh, with a smile and treats them as if they were the most important person in the world and being treated that way is quite attractive. All the best blessings and always close with a benediction. So uh, consider that part of uh, the blessing that you have for the weekend, for the week ahead of us, for the summer that's before us, and for the season that's before us that we may find that in the midst of much difficulty and some anxiety, we will have confidence and self-esteem and self-poise and power, and that all of it will be attractive and helpful to others. Best and blessings, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.